Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is Tony Hollowitz and I'm going to be your instructor today and I want to thank you for being here. Today is our class in Microsoft Excel, but this is Excel Part 2 and I want to thank you for being here. A couple things I want to tell you before we get going is, hi Joanne, Joanne, we are getting going right now so I just want to inform you of a couple things. I am going to be muting the phones just so that it is quiet as people are listening on the line. If you want to unmute your phone, you can hit the star key in the number six. But what I'd ask you to do is reserve that until towards the end of the class because I will try to answer questions as we get towards the end of the class. Um, this class that I want to describe a little bit is a little bit difficult to do because one of the things I always find with second classes is that when we're working in these classes one of the things that we always find very difficult is trying to give information that is relevant to everyone in the class you know the first class is a basic class the second class we're trying to expound on some different things that will allow us to make it interesting for everyone involved and as we do that what we attempt to do is hit a lot of little things because I never know what you're gonna find interesting I want to try to make it an overview of different things as they relate to Microsoft Excel and again hopefully you'll pick up on some of these things some of the things you'll like some of the things well maybe you know already now having said all of that let me get right into Microsoft Excel part two what I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to go back just slightly and review some of the things we did in the last class and if you remember correctly we worked on a class called Tony's Place and in that class what we did is we went through and we started formatting some things what I want to draw your attention to first before we get into this is down at the bottom of the screen see how we have all of these tabs down at the bottom well the tabs are there because I'm going to address a number of subjects and each tab has information that will reflect the subjects we're going to work with but first of all I just want to come here to Tony's place and I'm going to do some of the things I did in the first class as far as formatting it's just going to be a real quick review so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come to where it says beer fry salad and I'm just going to center or I'm going to put all of these on the right hand side of the screen I'm going to change the color of the text to something like a dark blue and I'm going to make the background a goldish color I'm now going to make it bold just to make it stand out a little bit I'm going to grab the column heading and drag to the right just so you can see the way it looks and I've just done a little bit of formatting now I could do that across the top I'm not going to bother at this point I also in the previous class took all the numbers and I want to eliminate or decrease the decimals so I clicked on the decrease decimal a couple times and now I got just really nice round numbers I'm going to center all this and just to remind you when we're working with these numbers although right there we see a number that says 77 the reality is that that number is not 77 if we come up here to what is called the formula bar we'll see that that number is actually seventy six dollars and sixty six cents it's rounded it off here in this area so at that point what I decided to do is I said well if we've got all these figures why don't we total them together and I went up I used the auto sum feature by clicking on it now at this point I can either click on it a second time or hit the enter key on my keyboard I'm just going to click on it a second time and it totaled it up if I want to take all this information and total it up I can select all the corresponding cells below the rows click on auto sum once and it guesses or anticipates that I want to add up some of the cells up above so I'm going to grab this information I'm going to center it and again for the most part that's a good part of what we went through now I added some other things did some um, adding of columns and cells and hiding but I'm not going to go over all that again but I just want to bring you back here to refresh your memory the other thing that I touched on briefly is something called formulas and probably one of the biggest things we do in Microsoft Excel is work on formulas 
Well, I shouldn't say one of the biggest things, but probably one of the biggest questions I get is how do you work with formulas? And in the first class, what I suggested is that you practice with formulas. And one of the problems with formulas, one of the problems with Excel in general, is that unless you're using this every single day, it might not be the kind of thing that you're going to remember if you come back into Excel later in the class. So when we're working in Excel in formulas, if you are not using formulas every day, it's very easy to re forget how to do this. So the little trick I wanted to teach you is if you need to remember how to do formulas in any cell in a spreadsheet, just simply type in a number. Then hit the Enter key and you'll go down to the next cell below it. Type in another number, hit the Enter key again. Now, if I go up and click on the Auto Sum feature once and then twice, what it's going to do, it's going to lock in or sum together those first two numbers of 8 and 5. And again, we've got our result, it's 13. If I click away from that cell and just observe it, cell B4, it appears the number 13 resides in that cell. But in actuality, it is not the number 13. If we click on that cell and then go up to the formula area, the formula bar, we'll see that cell actually contains a formula that starts with the equal sign, has the word sum, and then in parentheses B2 through B3. In other words, it's telling it to sum together B2 and B3. So the way you're going to remember formulas going forward is just simply take two numbers, add them together using the auto sum feature, and then once you've done that, that will allow you to look at the formula bar and just remember how a basic formula is set up. And in this case, it's very simple. Equal, sum, and then in parentheses, the cells we're referencing. On occasion, what you might find is you have cells all over the place. So what I'm going to do for just a moment is just show you a couple little options. And I'm just going to take a number of cells here. Oop, let me put this one in. Seven. I'm just going to put a bunch of numbers around the screen to illustrate a point. Sometimes, if you want to add numbers together, if they're not all in a line like these two numbers are, if I come to this cell and say I want to add all these other cells together, well, if I click on Auto Sum, well, the Auto Sum gets a little confused because it's looking for numbers to add together. It shot it out here to the number 8, but that's not actually the number we want to add together. The first number is the number 5. So when I clicked on 5, which is actually in cell D5, up here you'll observe it put in the column or the cell D5. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the control key down and once I've held the control key down I'm going to come down and click on 8 I'm going to come over and click on 6, 8, and 7. So the control key allows me to get around the spreadsheet clicking on random cells to get it in the formula. And now if I simply hit enter I've locked it in. So you'll see now this particular formula equal the sum of D5 and all the other cells that I clicked on. So that's just another way to grab some different information from around your spreadsheet. If items are in a line like this from top to bottom you can use the shift key to click on the first one I'm sorry, if you click on the first one, then hold the shift key down and click on the last one, it highlights or selects everything in between. So that's a good little trick to know, and that's a general Windows trick. You know, you can do that when you're selecting files, you can do that in a lot of different places. But the control key allows you to jump around the screen a bit. So you can go grab random cells wherever they might be, even if they're not in an order. Good to know. And just to go back here to this formula for a minute, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit delete and I've deleted the formula. Again, if you want to take this formula and instead of maybe doing the sum, if you come up to the right of the auto sum and click on the drop down, you're going to see these are common functions, but there's even more functions down here below. So I'm going to click on more functions and this is where you'll go into an area where first it shows you most recently used. If you click on this drop down and choose all, what you'll see is down here along the bottom you'll see all kinds of formulas you can use. Now, just because I know a little bit about Excel doesn't mean I know anything about these formulas. I'm not a mathematician, I'm not a statistician, but there are all kinds of formulas in here you can use 
Excel is like the English language. Even though I know the English language doesn't mean I can write a book about a particular subject. In other words, I can't write a book about the dynamics of flight. I can't write a book about heart disease. Just because I know the English language does not mean I can apply it in any way I see fit. And one of the things that I find happens when I'm teaching Excel is to a certain degree people assume that because you know Excel you know how to do all the things that are related to Excel. And I gotta tell you that's just not the case. If you have specific needs for whatever you do, what I highly recommend is look to someone within your industry that has dealt with Excel, done spreadsheets to suit the way you work in your business. Find maybe someone that can be a mentor to you to teach you how to do things within your industry because frankly there's things I have no knowledge of. And the reason I say that is because what I want to make people aware of is if you're in a business situation and you have an Excel spreadsheet, even something as simple as Tony's Place, well, just because you look at this spreadsheet doesn't mean you actually understand it. Now, I could sit here. If I didn't know it, I could probably figure out what was done here. But I always tell people, give yourself the benefit of the doubt when it comes to a spreadsheet. If someone opens a spreadsheet for you, even though you know Excel, you still got to get in and understand the information behind that spreadsheet before you can actually get in and really be able to work with it. So a good spreadsheet, a good design of a spreadsheet will be something that you can teach other people about and let them get into it and work on it. Okay. So just for a moment, talking about the formulas, again, there's a lot of different ways you can do formulas. The other thing that I highly advocate is if you forget how to do something, open up Google and type in something like how do you create a formula in Excel you'd be amazed the number of things you can get back for information that will just get you over that hump use Google a lot because you could put in how do you find financial stuff in Excel whatever it might be use Google as a tool to get you where you need to be don't feel like you gotta remember all this because frankly I don't think you will so I just wanted to touch on formulas again briefly, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to another tab. And what I want you to observe is these tabs have different colors. If you right click on any tab, you can go up and you can do all kinds of things with tabs. You can delete them, you can rename them, you can move or copy them, you can change a different tab color. So this one was previously red. I'm going to click on tab color all kinds of color options come up. I'm just going to make it green now and click OK. Now, at first it doesn't look like anything really happened, but you'll notice there's a slight green underline. When you click away from that particular tab, you'll see that it appears to be green. Another thing, over to the left here, we have some options. If I click on this first arrow pointing to the left with the line next to it, it will take me to my very first tab. If I click on the one to the far right, it takes me to my tab furthest away. In this case, it's tab number 14. If I want to go back, I can use this item to go back to tab 1. And again, I can go from tab to tab to tab by using these left and right arrow keys. I can also come over here to the far right where I have a scroll bar. And what I've done is it's sort of hard to see, but the scroll bar has a line right to the left of the left pointing arrow. If I click and hold, I can make the scroll bar bigger or smaller so I can see more of these tabs or take them away. Also, your screen resolution will determine the number of tabs you have down at the bottom of the screen. So there's a lot of little things you can do with Excel. I mean, I could spend 10 minutes just talking to you about tabs and organizing that. I'm not going to do that at this moment except to say that there's a lot of little things you can do. For example, if I want to take this options box tab and drag it over in between tab number two and three and let go, well, I can do that. I've just reversed the sort slightly of these tabs. I'm going to click on it again, and I'm going to bring it back. And what I've done with the tabs is I've given them names with numbers so I can sort of keep track of where I'm at as I'm working with the tabs. So it's just my little strategy for the tabs for this class. Now I'm going to come back down to the bottom where it says auto filter and I'm just going to click in this 
spreadsheet. Auto filter is a way of taking information and filtering it so you can find specifically the information you want. And I want to illustrate that for you right now. What this particular spreadsheet, and again, this is a spreadsheet in a workbook. And this particular workbook is what I've called Tony's Place March 2008 B class. The name isn't really relevant, but that's the name of it. This is a workbook. This workbook is made up of all of these spreadsheets. So this particular spreadsheet, which is the auto filter spreadsheet, is the sheet I'm going to use to show you how to do auto filter. We just have a lot of information here, and it's a good sheet to filter information from. So first of all, I want to go up to the top where we have this zoom feature, and I'm going to go down to 75%, because what I'm trying to do is I just want to shrink down what you see on the screen. I know it might be hard to read, but sometimes I'll shrink it down just to make things a little bit smaller, just so we can really see what we're working with, so things aren't running off the screen. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to bring it right in there. This, I'm going to leave like that. This is employee size. Yeah, I know we can't see it real well, but I want to make it fairly small. I'm just trying to make these things a little bit smaller by dragging the lines in between. So you see, we have a decent amount of information here. If I go up top, and I choose 50%, it's going to make it even smaller. It makes it harder to read, but it's a good way for me to just see a rough summary of the information we have here. In this particular sheet of information, we have company name, first name, last name, title, employee size, street address, street address city, zip code, phone number, fax number, and web address. Now, the reason I'm telling you all of that is because I'm going to go back up to 100%, and I'm going to choose 100%, and now what I'm going to do is come up here and click on column E. I'm going to resize this to make it a little bit bigger. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up on the toolbar. I'm going to click on Data. I'm going to click on Filter. And I'm going to click on Auto Filter. And again, I just want to show you what was there so it made sense to you. And when I click on Auto Filter, what's going to occur is I've put a little drop-down box right here in the employee size range. If I click on that drop down, what you're going to see is this allows me to sort this entire list. And this one, I think there's about 200 rows, but it allows me to filter down different items. So, for example, if I want to find all the people in this spreadsheet that have between 100 and 249 employees, if I click on this, now I've filtered it down to just these people. If I go back up and click on this drop down right here and go down, let's choose another one, let's choose five to nine, and now we see there's a lot more of them. I'm going to draw your attention back down here to the bottom left, and it tells me that actually this spreadsheet, I forgot how big it was, we have 6,641 rows, of which 1,095 are falling in this range of five to nine employees. So the auto filter is a great way to quickly go in and see what kind of information is in your spreadsheet. Now in this particular case, I just did employee size range. I'm going to click on the drop down, I'm going to go back up, and I'm going to click on all, and I brought everything back. This time what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to data. To take the filtering off, I'm going to come down to filter. I'm going to go over to Auto Filter, click on it a second time. This time, and again, sometimes I'll zoom out just to show you what I'm doing. I'm going to go down to 50% because I want you to be able to see every bit of content. I'm going to click on Column A on the top. I'm going to drag to B. See, I'm going to go all the way across. Now I've selected all the columns that have information in my spreadsheet. This time, I'm going to go up to Data. I'm going to go to Filter, and I'm going to go to Auto Filter. And now what it's done, it's put a drop down on every single column. I'm going to go back up to 100% so you can see the information. But now what we're going to do is we're going to come in and look at this a little bit different way. I'm going to scroll over to the right a little bit to, again, examine a little bit of this information. But what I'm going to do next is let's say that I want to find an employee size range of 
from 10 to 19, so I'm going to click on this. Now I've filtered it down, so now, again, if I look down at the bottom left, 995 of these almost 6,500 records have 10 to 19 employees. But let's say I want to drill it down even more, and I want to find only the street address city or city that begins with the letter D. Well, let me show you what I can do. So again, let me back up. I first filtered it to only companies that have 10 to 19 employees. Now I'm going to come over to the city. Although this says street address city, I'm going to click on the drop down, and I'm going to come down to custom, and I'm going to click on custom. Now, I urge you to go in and play with the filter. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this information except to show you where some of this stuff is and unfortunately in this class I'm trying to expose you to a lot of little things versus go into great detail I think a lot of times what you gotta do with software Excel being one of them is just be aware of some of the things that are available to you once you realize they're available to you go in and play with them a little bit because that's the way you're truly gonna understand how that information works Filtering here is not taking anything away, it's just filtering the information we have so we're not harming anything, we're not doing anything that is in any way going to harm this data. So now what I'm going to do is where it says equal, I'm going to click on the drop down and I have some options. And I can scroll down this list and I'm going to put begins with. And I'm just going to put a letter in here, I'm going to put in the letter C and I'm going to come down and click OK. So now what we're doing is we're filtering down the companies with 10 to 19 employees and we're going to tell it the city is any city that begins with the letter C. So I'm going to click OK. Now here are all the cities. So now we filtered it down even more. We filtered it down 10 to 19 employees, the number of cities that begin with the letter C, there's 90 of them. So as you can see, the auto filter is a great way to come in and find information quickly and it is a phenomenal, phenomenal tool if you are trying to find information and you don't want to work too, too hard to go in and search for information. Again, it's something that I highly recommend you try. I'm going to come back up to the top of the toolbar. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to go back to 50% because I want to grab all the columns and again, the way you grab columns is I'm going to put my pointer on column heading A. I'm going to drag over to the right to the far one K where it says web address. I've selected all those columns. I want to take the auto filter off. I'm going to click on data. I'm going to go to filter. I'm going to click on auto filter. See how it's got to check it's on now? If I click on it again, it takes it off. So we're back to where we began. Auto filter is a great tool. Next, another way that we can work with information is with a pivot table. So I'm going to come down on the bottom of the screen and I'm going to click on pivot table. Now one of the things about dealing with Excel is this. When you deal with Excel, one of the things that's tough is you first have to understand a little bit about the information that's in there. And I always like to tell the story about a tutorial that I did with someone that wanted a lot of good information on how to use Excel within their work. Now the dilemma I had was when we were working with Excel, this woman was a nurse and the data in her spreadsheet was medical information. So when I looked at her spreadsheet, honestly to me it made virtually no sense. It made absolutely no sense. So the first thing you got to understand when looking at data and getting in and playing with Excel is you first got to work with data that makes sense to you because if you go in and do something like what we're going to do now with a pivot table, if the data doesn't make sense, the pivot table isn't going to make sense. So get in and get some simple data that you can work with and figure out. So let me show you what I did here. This is just a very simple spreadsheet on sales. And what I've done over here under the states, the states I chose are the six New England states. The salespeople, with the exception of Tom Brady, they're all president, former presidents. So 
when we look at this information, I think that's something you can understand. You can understand the New England states and the fact that, with the exception of Tom Brady, they're all presidents. The order amount, that's not something you have to really concern yourself. The order day, invoice number. And what I did here also is the day of the week, just to illustrate how you can break this down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to click over here in cell A1. I'm just taking the pointer and I'm getting it away from our data. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to come up, I'm going to click on data, I'm going to go down to where it says pivot table and pivot chart report. Now what I want you to be aware of here is there's some things you can do that I'm not going to do. I'm going to keep this as simple as possible just to illustrate how a pivot table works. What a pivot table basically does is it allows you to quickly manipulate information to get information back. And you'll see that in a couple seconds. So I'm going to click on pivot table and pivot chart report. And the pivot table and pivot chart wizard pops up on the screen. What I want you to do when you first try to use this is just simply click on next. And that's what I'm going to do. When I click on next, it's going to prompt me or ask me what range or what information I want. If you click on this little square right over here to the right, it's going to bring up a little box. And when I have this box, just sort of ignore it, but come up and click and highlight or select all your data. So I went across, I'm going to come down to the bottom, and what it's doing, it's going to put all of that information right in there. So this is how I can select my information that I want to have in my pivot table. Okay, so I'm just going down the screen, and as soon as this completes, uh, we're not quite there. Almost, almost. We've got a lot of information. Okay, we went a little too far, so I'm just going to go back up till we hit the bottom. So I'm basically just selecting all the information that I want to have in my pivot table. This would have been another good reason to zoom out up here a little bit, just so I could see the information a little easier. So now what I'm going to do is I can either click on this box or I can hit enter on my keyboard. Okay, oh, I take that back. I did that wrong. I should have just hit enter on my keyboard. So let me select the text again. I misspoke. And again, what I should have done is instead of clicking on that box, it thought I wanted another range. I should have just grabbed or hit enter on my keyboard. So again, I'm just selecting this text again, and I apologize for that. We're almost there. There we go. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm again going to go up and click on Data. I'm going to go back down to Pivot Table because it kicked me out of there. I'm going to go Next. I'm going to go Next. And I'm going to go Finish. So basically, we're just grabbing the information and then we're just hitting next, next, and then finish. Okay, so remember I was talking earlier that we had the state, the salesperson, the order amount, the order date, the invoice, and the day. That was my information. That was my original information. So now what we can do is we can take this information over here in the pivot table field list and we can drag it over to these areas over here. I want you to notice that we have rows on the left, a little blue area right here, and we have columns on the right. Now sometimes, depending on the type of data you have, you have to work with this to see how the data lines up the best for you. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, what I want to do is I want to take the salesperson, and I'm going to take the salesperson and drag it over here. And I'm just clicking on salesperson over here, dragging, and I'm dropping it on this area right on my left where it says drop row fields here. So I dragged and I dropped. So look what happened. It took all my salespeople which were in my spreadsheet and it put them over here on the left. Now what we want to do is we want to take the state. We want to know what state the sales were in. I'm going to drag that into the column headings. So now we have the states across the top and now we have the data area right here that I'm going to come over and I'm going to choose order amount and drag it into the middle. So now what we've done is we've taken our data for the states and we've moved it into the middle and now we can see the sales for the individual salespeople 
For example, George Bush had this amount in Maine, this amount in Massachusetts, etc., etc. We've got all our totals. We've got all the information. Now, let's say we want to take this information and narrow it down even a little bit more. Well, if I click on this drop-down right here, I can go in and choose people that I don't want to see. So, for example, let's say we don't want to see George Bush, we don't want to see Jimmy Carter, and we don't want to see Tom Brady. I uncheck those, and I'm going to click OK, and now we have a very quick report on the information that we requested. Okay, I can do the same under State, and I'm going to click on State, I'm going to click on the drop-down, and I'm going to say, you know what, I don't want to see Maine and I'm going to click OK, and we've taken Maine out of there. So in a nutshell, what we've done here is we've taken a lot of this information, and we have now simplified and made it quick to work with. If we want to take this information and get it out of there, I'm going to click on the Salesperson tab, and I'm just going to drag it back over to my report right there. I'm going to take the state, and I'm going to drag it back over here. The order amount I'm going to click on this and I'm going to drag it back over here. Oop, wrong one, sorry about, here we go, there we go. So now we're back to our original information. So if we want to come in and redo this, let's say we want to say, okay, what is the state? Maybe over here on the left. And now we want to find out the day. When was the day? and what were our sales for the specific day in the specific states. Now I'm going to take my order amount and drag it in the middle. So as you can see, it's showing me which days were the most productive sales-wise based on the states. So what I urge you to do is to get some information in a spreadsheet, work with the pivot table wizard, go in, start dragging things out, in, drag them out, and again, to drag them out, see right here where we have the state label? I'm going to click on this, just drag it right back over here to the right. The order amount, click on it, drag it back over to the right, and I'm just getting rid of them, and now I'm going to take the day and move it back. So pivot tables are something that are great for quickly manipulating information. So if, if you're in a meeting and someone says, yeah, but what about this? This is where a pivot table excels because of the fact that you can move things in, move them out very quickly, and see the data you need. Okay. Now, I'm going to come back down to the tabs, and I'm going to choose tab number four, the options box. When you work in Microsoft Excel, you have many, many options. And this is something that I urge you to explore in Excel. If you go up on your toolbar, and right here we just have a picture of the options box. I just put it, a picture of it so you can see what it looks like. But to actually get here, you click on Tools and then Options. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on Tools, and then I'm going to click on Options. When this box pops up, we have a number of different tabs that we can choose from. I'm going to put it on top of that so there's no confusion. And again, this blue bar is called the title bar. I just clicked on it, and I can drag this around the screen. So when you have a blue bar like that, you can click on it, hold, and drag it around. I'm going to come over to the General tab, and I'm going to start here. What you have to do is come in here and look at this to understand some of the things you can do with it. This is the kind of thing, if you come in and look at it today, it might not make sense to you. But if you look at it periodically as you get more experience with Excel, what can occur is this will start to make more sense to you. For example, right here where it says R1, C1 reference style, well, that might not make sense right now. In fact, when I first saw it, it didn't make sense. But all that means is notice our rows are numbers, our columns are letters. You can actually change Excel so that when you choose R1C1, it will put numbers across the top. So if I click on R1C1 and then OK, it would put numbers across the top. What I'll do is I'll leave that for now. Actually, you know what? No, I'm going to take that off because it's going to create an issue when we go forward. For those of you who use Word and PowerPoint, Word and PowerPoint also have option boxes, so I urge you to go into those as well and see what they do. 
Some of the things that I like is right here, this recently used file list. When you click on file up on the toolbar, if you notice, you will see the last four files you've opened in Excel. There's a list there, so if you want to get back to a file you had previously used, you can get back to it quickly. You can actually increase this number. I believe the maximum is nine, and I, that is correct. So if I increase it, you'll see the nine spreadsheets you had recently worked on. Also, when you open a new workbook, it also has worksheets. By default, it opens with three worksheets. But if you're always using eight worksheets, we'll just change the default number of worksheets up to eight. So now when you open a new one, it will have eight worksheets instead of three. You can change the default location for the files. You can change the font. Okay, so there's a lot of little things you can do in here. I'm going to come over here to custom list, and I'm going to address this a little bit later. But what you can do is you can also work with a custom list. So say, for example, you had a list of products, you know, and for the sake of our discussion, say it was product A, product B, C, D, and you're always typing that out. Well, you can create a list of that so that you can work with that much quicker by creating a custom list. And I'll show you that again a little later. Um, so I'm not going to show you how to do it right here. I'll show you in a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up and click on the Security tab. Again, I'm going to try to touch on this a little bit later, but you can also create security for a spreadsheet. So, for example, you can create a password to open this spreadsheet. You can also create a password to modify the spreadsheet. On the View tab, and again, I'm jumping around a little bit here, we have a lot of different options. If you have a spreadsheet that you have a lot of zero values in, well, I want to show you down below where it says zero values. If you uncheck that, you can uncheck seeing all the zeros. So, for example, if you create a spreadsheet with a lot of calculations and some of the cells do not have any actual values, it's zero. Well, you're going to see all those zeros. And I know when I'm working with a spreadsheet, I just find that annoying. I don't want to see all the zeros. So what I can do is uncheck the zero values, and that way I won't see them. A lot of different options here for comments, whether you see the comments or not. Placeholders, again, come in here and mess around with this a little bit, and you'll see that you have a lot of different options. And that's all I want to review. I just want to come in and show you you have many options. Uh, there was one other one I wanted to show you, and I think it might be under the General tab. Bear with me just a second. And it, the one I am referring to is the way you hit Enter in the tab, and oh, I believe it's under Edit. When you are working in Excel, let's say you're in cell A1, and you type in something, and you hit Enter. Well, when you hit Enter, by default, Excel will go down to the cell below where you were. So again, if you're in cell A1, and you type in Tony, for example, you hit Enter, it will go down to cell A2. Well, Right here, you can tell it, instead of moving down, you can change it to moving right, up, or left. Down is the default. You can also take this off so that after you hit Enter, it doesn't do anything. What that allows you to do is, instead of using Enter, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move around the screen. So I think a lot of these things are just personal preference in how you work with Microsoft Excel. The more experience, the more you work with it, the more these things might become relevant. Okay, I'm just going to click Cancel because I want to get out of this, and again, click on Tools and then Options to see some of the options you have within Microsoft Excel. Now I'm going to come down to the bottom of the screen. I'm going to click on Tony's Place A right here. Now, what I'm going to do next is this particular spreadsheet is one of many similar spreadsheets. We have A, B, C, and D. And if you look at the tabs down below, you'll see those. And I'm just going to scroll over a little bit using the tabs, just so they're a little more prevalent. They're the first four. Ig ignored number six. So let's say right here on Tony's Place A, if I click on Tony's Place B, 
you'll see all the information is virtually the same. What I've done is I've just taken this spreadsheet, this particular one, I've right clicked on Tony's place A, and what I've done is I've gone move or copy, and when I click on that, a dialog box comes up, and what I've told it is I want to create a copy of Tony's place A, and if I scroll down, there it is. So if I click OK, what this will do is way at the end of my spreadsheet, it will create a copy of this particular spreadsheet. I'm going to click OK, and just to illustrate what has occurred, I'm going to scroll all the way to the very end. All the way, oh, I misspoke, I'm sorry, it, it put it next to that. So here it is, it put it to the left of it. Tony's Place A2. I was thinking it was going to put it to the far end, but it didn't, it put it right next to it. So you can copy a spreadsheet, and that's in essence what I did with these four spreadsheets. I created the first one, and then I made three copies. Now, I want to delete the one I just made a copy of. I'm going to right click on the tab, and I'm going to click on delete. It's going to warn me, I'm going to say delete, and sure enough, I deleted the one I just made. The reason I have four of them is because I want to illustrate something. Because all four are identical, all the information is in the same spot, let's say on this first one, A, I want to change the way this looks, just the fundamental look and feel of the way this looks. Well, if I want to change the days of the week, I selected these, and now that I've selected them, I'm going to hold the control key down, and I'm going to come down and click on the tab for Tony's Place B, Tony's Place C, and Tony's Place D. Now, I'm going to take all this information on my original spreadsheet, Tony's Place A, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a different color. I'm going to make it a background fill that's, for example, dark red. We can't see the writing. I'm now going to make the font something lighter for contrast. I'm going to make it bold, and I'm going to take these columns, column E, and I'm going to drag to the right and I'm also going to center all these items. So again, what I did is I took the one I wanted to work on, I highlighted the cells, then once I selected them, I held the control key down, and then I chose B, C, and D. I came back to my original, and I did my formatting. So now when we go back to B, you're going to see it also changed the formatting there, as well as on C, and as well as on D. So again, just to do that again, let's say I want to change the formatting of all these items right here, all the numbers. Let's say I want to take out the decimal point and I want to center them. So I did it in the first one, A, which you'll see down below. It's Tony's Place A. Now, because I've selected that text, I'm going to hold the control key down. I'm going to choose B, C, and D. And now when I do my formatting, it's also going to impact those other spreadsheets. So let me go show you. I'm going to center all the information. I'm going to take away the decimal points by decreasing the decimal. And now I'm going to take all the numbers and I'm going to change them to a different color. Green doesn't show up real well, but I'm just trying to illustrate how this works. Let's choose Tony's Place C. Oh, and you know what? I didn't select that properly. I misspoke. I didn't put the proper formatting on. So let me do that again. I believe I clicked away from it. and I'm going to make them all bold just to illustrate a point and do green and do all that formatting. Let me come back to Tony's Place A. There we go. I'm sorry, I didn't click on that properly and that's why it didn't work. So again, you can format this information in multiple spreadsheets by working with that method. Okay. So I suspect people are getting a lot of questions and you know, again, I'm going to try to answer these towards the end. But I'm, again, just trying to run through a lot of information here today. Next, I want to go down and click on the tab down below, which is Side-by-Side -side Comparison. Now, in my previous example on the options, I had clicked on File, or I had suggested in the options you could click on File, and when I had said you could change the previously viewed files, here they are right down here. There's four of them. If I had made that larger, again up to nine, I would have seen the nine most recent files that I had opened. 
But earlier I was working on another spreadsheet as I was preparing for this class and it's called Tony's Place March 2008A. Well, I'm just going to click on that because I'm going to open a second spreadsheet. And for the most part it looks identical as far as the tabs. If I come up to Window right here, I can go down and see the two spreadsheets I have open. The one I've been working on until I just opened this is Tony's Place March 2008. I just wanted to get back here. Now, if I want to see what's called a side-by-side -side comparison, let's assume these spreadsheets have different information. I'm going to go back up to Window and I'm going to go down to where it says compare side by side with Tony's Place March 2008. If I had five spreadsheets open behind this one I'd see all of them listed but I'm going to choose this one and now what you're seeing is the spreadsheets are side by side. Now I can come down here and click on the same tab side by side comparison and you'll see now I can see all the information from one spreadsheet as it's compared to another. So the best way to illustrate this is although these numbers are the same, let's say we had a Tony's Place spreadsheet of sales for each week and I wanted to compare this week to last week. I'd open both spreadsheets and compare them side by side. So it's a good little tool to be able to work with. So I'm going to click on close side by side and I'm back to where I began. Now what I also want to do is I want to click on window and make sure I'm in the proper spreadsheet. This is the spreadsheet I want. If there were 10 spreadsheets open I'd see all 10 listed here. So now I'm back to where I began. So side by side is a great little tool for comparing information. Let me go to tab 7. Many little things. Well what I want to do here is I want to illustrate frankly just a bunch of little things and I'm going to use this particular spreadsheet to show you how to do this. Well, let's say for example that this series of cells I'm scrolling down the screen and I'm just grabbing a series of cells right here. Let's say for whatever reason I always want to be able to get to these cells really easy. I've selected the cells with my mouse, I've highlighted them and now I'm going to come up here to the left and see right here where it says D83, this is called the name box. I'm going to click on that and by default when I clicked in that box I have highlighted or selected the cell D83. I'm going to type in right now Mary. Okay, And I'm just going to hit enter. What I've now done is here in the name box I have named this series of cells Mary. I'm going to click away from it. I'm going to do control home to get back to cell A1. Let's say for example that I want to get back to that series of cells really quickly. The cells named Mary. Well if I come up here in the name box what I can do is one of a couple things. I can type in Mary and hit enter and by default or not by default but by design it jumps down to where it says Mary or the cells I chose to call Mary. So if you're working in a very huge spreadsheet and there's a series or an area of cells that you want to find or get to quickly you can literally select those cells come up to the name box here type in a name you know it might be something you know very specific like total and again I've got one in here for total Oop, I gotta get away from that click on the drop down over here on the right I've got a series of cells named Fred and I've also got a series of cells named total so again click on the drop down when this little box pops up click on total and it grabbed the total which is down at the bottom so again you can name cells now let me show you another interesting thing you can do by using the names I want to just draw your attention down here to this cell. This is the cell that I named total and you'll observe that up here in the top left in the name box. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do control home because I want to get back to the first cell or cell A1. Let's say that we want to figure out what our commissions would be. Well what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in 
commissions. And here in this cell, I'm going to create a little formula because I know our commissions are 10% of whatever the total sales are. So when you create a formula, I'm going to create a formula in cell B2 by starting with the equal sign. And then next to it, I'm going to put the sum. Oop, I put a parentheses. I didn't mean to do that. I'm going to type sum, S-U-M. And then in parentheses, I'm going to type total. Because remember how that cell with our total, we called it or named it total. So instead of putting a cell number in or a cell reference, I'm going to take total times 0 0.10. And then I'm going to close it off with a parenthesis. So it's going to take the cell called total times 10%. I'm going to hit enter, and there is my total. 122,832. Not too bad. So not only can we name cells, but we can take that name and put it into a formula. One of the cool little things you can do. Another interesting thing we can do when we're working in a spreadsheet such as this is as follows. What we can do is if I click somewhere in the spreadsheet where we have all our basic information, if I want to select all this information, if I hold the control key down, the shift key, and then press the number 8, it will select all the cells within that area. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to come in and now do something called conditional formatting. And the way I do that is I go up to Tools. I'm sorry, I misspoke. For, format, conditional formatting. And then we have some options. We can tell it if the cell value is between, or we have a lot of different options here, not equal to, greater than, less than. We can also choose some other options here if a formula is. But I'm going to do the cell value. And I'm going to say if the cell value is between, let's say, uh, let's say 10 or 1200 and 10,000 we're going to format this as such. I'm going to click on the format option right here and we're going to tell it we want it to be bold we also want it to be as far as a color we want it to be red and we can do some other things. We can do a border, we can put a border around it, or we can put a pattern. Let's put a pattern behind it just like that. And I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to click OK again. So now what we've done is we've taken all the items in this spreadsheet that met that criteria and formatted it. So when we look at this spreadsheet, we can see all the items that met our criteria. So that's another thing that I highly recommend you go in and mess around with because when you start dealing with that, it can find easy ways to have information stand out for you. Now this ends our Excel 2 class. We've gone through a lot of information, a lot of it we suggest you take a look at. We've just touched the surface with it. You know, again, we recognize the fact that we're just trying to expose you to some of the things you can do with Excel. When you start working with Excel, you really got to get in, mess around, play with it a little bit. And you're going to have a situation where you're not going to remember everything. That's quite typical. There are things I do in Excel that when I go to do them again, it's like, wait a minute, how do you do that? What I do recommend is take notes, keep them on your computer someplace, create a Word document with Excel notes, and make notes to yourself in there. And again, worst case scenario, if you're ever in a situation where you can't remember how to do something, Google it. Say, how do you apply formatting to certain numbers in Excel, for example? And that might return something for conditional formatting. But a lot of times, the dilemma is you know what you want to do, but you don't remember what they call it. Having said that, you can always pick up the phone, call our office, visit our website, johnanthonygroup.com, and contact us either via email or phone, and we'll see if we can try to answer that question for you. So I want to thank you so very much for being here. Our next class, Excel 3, is going to go into more depth and some other things that we're going to try to expose you to. And uh, we hope you've enjoyed this class. Thank you so very much for being here. Have a great day.